All right, we're back. And unfortunately, some bad news here. Dozens killed after severe floods and landslides hit KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. At least 33 people have been killed after floods and mudslides hit the South African province on April 21st and April 22nd. Search and rescue operations are in progress and the death toll is expected to raise. Heavy rain is expected to last at least through Wednesday on April 24th. The province is experiencing heavy rain since the start of the Easter weekend, resulting in flooded roads, collapsed buildings, and downed power poles. The government reported dozens of incidents of collapsed walls and flooded homes. Hundreds of people were forced to evacuate low-lying areas. An AFP photographer reported on Hindu Temple in Durban was entirely flooded with water levels up to 33 feet. At least 23 people died in Durban and 10 more in other parts of the province. Take a look at some of this footage here on Watchers.News. They always do a great job of collecting information. And too many times we've seen these pictures from around the world. Uh, areas with landslides, flash flooding in villages. Here we see the house is giving way. Uh, nothing to cheer about for sure, unless I'm just confusing their dialect. A scary situation, especially when you live in villages like this where these homes, heavy rains, and of course, uh, this does not look good. People are probably frantic right now as buildings are collapsing. And we are reporting that this also comes right after uh, Watchers.News did a special segment a few days back about the high amount of landslides that they've reported on this year alone. And they keep coming in. Uh, the footage for uh, uh, rainfall, friends, landslides. Old, uh, Here we are. Highway situation. It looks like we're in lakes. So just all kinds of extreme weather in this region is continuing to happen. And we were, like I said, we were just talking about this region getting hit pretty hard with um, floods this year. We just dealt with Tropical Cyclone Adai, which by the way, we're looking at over $118 million that was given to this part of the country for rebuild. Now we are eye eyeing Tropical Cyclone Kenneth. It is set to strike the Comoros, Mozambique, Tanzania this week. Just about a month after Cyclone Adai devastated parts of southeastern Africa. So we have these recent landslides killing 33 people. We had a die that just happened over a month ago. Uh, it was reported that over $118 million so far has been paid back to that region to rebuild. Um... And now we're now now we're talking about um, another tropical cyclone to hit this area that right now it, it's getting its butt kicked when it comes to Mother Earth and right oh just look at that and that's just basically the foundation giving way and just the building collapses and crumbles. I hope nobody was inside that house. Uh, very 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 scary times for these people right now. The storm, which the French Meteorological Agency calls Tropical Cyclone Kenneth, was about 200 kilometers north of Madagascar Tuesday and heading towards the Comoros Islands. The U.S. Department of Defense Joint Typhoon Warning Center says that late today, the tropical storm will have sustained winds of about 90 kilometers per hour and gusts up to 120 kilometers per hour as well. Both U.S. and French warning centers forecast that the storm will pass over Comoros tomorrow with gusts nearing 150 kilometers per hour. 
By late Thursday, it will be on the coast near the border of Mozambique and Tanzania with gusts topping 200 kilometers an hour. After it makes landfall, the storm is expected to weaken into a tropical depression on Friday with wind speeds dropping below 75 kilometers an hour. So we'll have to keep our eyes on this storm. And I knew something was uh, a brew. And once again, the Weather Channel is actually making headlines about uh, keeping an eye on this particular storm. And, you know, just the unfortunate one-two punch that we're seeing right now from this region. Um, these folks here have had enough as far as when it comes to storm damage and loss of life as this continues the early storm season of 2019 has not been nice to this region of the world right now. Extremely heavy rainfall hits Spain. Costa Blanca hit by heaviest April rain since 1946. Uh, severe storm affecting parts of Spain from April 18th uh, to April 22nd dropped extremely heavy amount of rain. Produced waves of 9.8 feet. The worst affected Costa Blanca over 200 kilometers, that's 124 miles, of Mediterranean coastline in the province. Nice. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, nearly 400 people have had to be evacuated, mostly from Benidorm and Torviana, or Torvieja, after heavy rain turned roads into rivers, submerging cars, and flooding homes and businesses. We can look at the rain totals here. I'm not going to begin to pronounce some of these cities, but we've gotten lots of rain in 48 hours. And just like we've always talked about, the constant of cosmic rays influx and its uh, particular influence on the atmosphere, seeding our clouds, increasing the amount of precipitation that we see falling from these particular storm systems. Six inches of rain in 24 hours is a lot. It's Even in 48 hours, that's still a lot of rain. Six inches. A lot of places don't get that in two months. And to get that in two days is incredible. And just think if we would continue to get storms like that on the regular through a weekly basis. Three to four times a week. You know, the magnetosphere is only weak now. You wait. Again, this is only the beginning. Sangor farmers claim 80% crop loss, accuse authorities of improper reports. Wow. So it's not just the farmers here in the United States. Farmers in the town of Sangor, state of Punjab, India, said a massive hailstorm hit the region on April 17, 2019, destroying 80% of their crops. Farmers accused authorities of improper reports, saying revenue department officers visited villages not their farms. Huh. The rain and hailstorm have caused around 80% damage to the standing wheat crop in various villages in the Sangor district. It's likely to add to the debt of to the farmers, but officials or officers concerned have shown only 20% loss, which is an injustice to us. So check that out. 80% crop has been damaged or destroyed. And officials are only saying that 20% is at a loss. And we thought we had a bad here with corrupt government. That face says it all right there. They are not being taken care of. We'll leave a link in the descriptions here. Thank you to the watchers.news. Tons of information to cover on that website. It's been very busy. Seismic. Uh, we've seen several landslide reports. Tropical storm had died. Now we're focusing on Kenneth. Crop loss across the region, across the world. It is nonstop, folks. And so we kind of switch gears here. This caught my eye. Professor Peter Ridd, a marine geophysicist of James Cook University in Townsville, uh, was terminated after rejecting research linking Great Barrier Reef changes to human action. Peter joins the show to share his side of the story. There's a podcast for this, and I listened to it. Um, Anthony apologizes as well for his audio. His mic 
something was up with that but uh, keep your volume down a little bit through the headphones it won't be too bad but the audio of the guest is just fine now this man was fired from his position at the James Cook University for his opinion and his evidence that points that the Great Barrier Reef changes are not caused by man-made climate change. And again, just like everything else right now that us deniers are being, when we get called deniers because we say things happen in cycles. Not once does anybody say that climate change isn't real. We just don't believe the theory that man has caused it. And here we go again with another theory that man causes uh, barrier coral reef changes. And this man here who studies it, and he's a geophysicist, knows what he's talking about and points out a lot of good points, a lot of the cycles here and how these changes happen regularly, just like solar cycles, just like ocean cycles. So if you got an extra 30 minutes on your hands, guys, I highly recommend you guys checking this uh, podcast out. Um, Very interesting interview, uh, very educational as well. I'm not well versed about the Barrier Reef, but I can tell you that uh, I understand now what the big uh, argument is, and AGW is definitely pushing that, um, you know, man has everything to do with changes down here. But interesting podcast. I invite everyone to check this out as well. And Earth Day, not a single environmental protection of the last 50 years has come true. Um, the Earth Day is almost feels like we should be carving some turkey. Why? Because we have a lot to be thankful for since the first Earth Day event occurred 49 years ago. We should be thankful that the gloom and doom predictions made throughout the past and several decades haven't come true. Fear-mongering about explosive population growth, food crisis, and the imminent uh, depletion of natural resources have been a staple to Earth Day events since 1970. And the common thread among them is that they've stirred up a lot more emotions than facts. By the year 2000, if present trends continue, we will be using up crude, crude oil at such rate that there won't be any more crude oil. Ecologist Kenneth Watt warned around for the first time uh, during an Earth Day event, you'll be driving, you'll be, (laughs) you'll drive up the pump and say, fill her up, buddy. And he'll say, I'm very sorry, there isn't any. Watt also warned of global cooling and nitrogen buildup, rendering all the planet's land unusable. (laughs) Well, interesting. That hasn't happened. In fact, he forgot to take in effect of how much CO2 is in the atmosphere right now. So when you have uh, a nitrogen buildup in the atmosphere and in the bedrock and an increase of CO2, well, that makes all plant life on this planet more, let's just say, accepting of the CO2 and nitrogen. In fact, it makes plant life thrive when you have increased CO2 and nitrogen in the bedrock and in the atmosphere. Um, These plants, the leaves, thicker, bigger, greener. So this is nothing but, um, you know, plant food here. Life, basically. So he warned of global cooling and nitrogen buildup, but he forgot to talk about how great plant life would be because of the CO2. You know, these people don't always use their heads, I guess, when they make these predictions. Uh, The issue, however, is that the present trends do not continue. They change dramatically for a number of reasons. Innovation happens, consumer behavior changes. Importantly, price signals play a huge role in communicating information to energy producers as well as consumers. Higher prices at the pump encourage companies to extract and supply more oil. Expensive gas prices, meanwhile, motivate entrepreneurs to invest in alternatives to oil, whether that's batteries, natural gas vehicles, or biofuels. Drivers will examine their consumption options as well, whether carpooling, finding alternative models of transportation, or over time purchasing a more fuel-efficient vehicle. You can read on here at what's up with that. But this website is great at one thing, and that is pointing out all of these climate alarm people out there who are predicting the world to end ice-free 
um, no snow, sea level rise, more increased hurricanes, uh, which hasn't happened yet, by the way. And we, al we also haven't seen uh, the ice caps melt. Um, we also haven't seen sea level rise to the extent where uh, these alarmists have predicted. Um, we also have miraculously uh, ridded ourselves of the drought situation that back in just 2015, people in California were saying this was a permanent drought. This will always go on because of climate change, because a human man-made climate change has turned California into a permanent drought situation. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, right now the United States is virtually drought free. We're talking spotty, a, a three to 8% spread of areas that might be in very weak drought conditions right now. Compared to last year, the Southwest, incredible what's happened in the last year and just like we said and I'll, I keep repeating myself I sound like a broken record but we've said this every year this is going to get worse and we are seeing things happening on a much faster scale and the next several days are going to be interesting for me just to watch TSI see if they continue to fall or do they rebound nicely and shoot right back up into the values that we were used to seeing. You know, I talked about how there hasn't been a lot of weather events to talk about uh, this week so far. Well, hold on to that thought because I'll go over our GFS outlook here in a minute. But even though we don't have anything to talk about here in the U.S., that doesn't mean worldwide we're not dealing with other issues, whether it's volcano eruptions, whether it's uh, mudslides, landslides, earthquakes of 6.0 magnitude, Flooding, drowning rains, destroying crops, hailstorms. I mean, yeah, the U.S., the, the Continental 48 caught a little bit of a break for a few days. Okay. The rest of the world's getting beat up right now. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.